just wanted to give a, a general update on research activities in the WSU spring wheat breeding program. Um, I'm standing here in the middle of one of our research trials. Uh, it's more, a couple acres in size. Um, you know, we continue to conduct research in spite of, uh, of lockdowns and shutdowns and uh, uh, the COVID-19 situation. Um, in this field in particular, I was gonna highlight, um, although this is just our normal breeding materials, um, we've been successful at getting a few grants lately that allow us to come through and do very detailed uh, measurements using uh, drones as, as well as satellites and specialized equipment to try to, to correlate or to try to um, connect what we're seeing in the field in terms of yield and, and uh, height and maturity and all the things that we can see with our eye or measure with our traditional equipment with uh, these very fast, rapid, um, high-tech solutions to, to measure plant health. Um, so for example, this very large field has already been flown with the drone multiple times. Um, we also have satellite imagery available from low orbiting satellites. So we can use both of those sources of information uh, to compare that with how the plants actually perform. And we, we take those measurements multiple times throughout the growing season and you know look to find which days or, or uh, maturity stages uh, give us the most information about how that, those plots are performing or how those different wheat varieties are performing. So in this field alone, we have about uh, a thousand different genotypes or a thousand different lines that we're measuring. And so combining um, you know, this high throughput measurement with, with a drone with, with specialized cameras and sensors, uh, with the size of the populations that we're doing, we're able to really powerfully look at you know, what makes wheat best adapted to the region and, and what traits are, are most important for us to select for. Um, other research that we continue to ramp up is in Hessian fly resistance. Um, 2020 is another year that we're seeing Hessian fly pressure broadly throughout the eastern Washington. Um, we've partnered with Syngenta this year to go out and, and place pheromone traps that actually attract the flies and count the populations. So this is the first time we've done this in a wide scale basis. Um, Syngenta is doing it uh, with, with their scientists and, and providing us supplies and we're providing a uh, you know, locations and the, and the expertise in kind where we're actually going out and, and getting accurate counts of when the flies are hatching, um, the overall level of fly uh, pressure. And so we hope to combine this, you know, with the resistance to, to better manage Hessian fly in the long term. Um, one exciting breakthrough in Hessian fly resistance in my program is just this past year, we finally detected or, or identified the resistance gene that protects most of our wheat against Hessian fly. So we didn't know what that gene was. We didn't know how to select for it besides actually finding flies and, and putting wheat in the presence of those. Um, so now we have molecular markers that we can very cost effectively and rapidly uh, take a sample of DNA from each plant and tell whether or not it has that resistance gene. So this is a, a major breakthrough. Um, it will help us breed wheat uh, more efficiently and, and uh, make sure that wheat is, is Hessian fly resistant, but it'll also allow us to track, you know, how useful that gene is um, over time and space and, and to combine that gene with other types of resistance to Hessian fly. So it's, it's, uh, it's taken many years, but it's, it's an exciting breakthrough that we finally know what the gene is, um, know where it is in the wheat uh, genome, and we have these tools that can easily select for Hessian fly resistance. And like I said, that's not been uh, available before for any of the resistance we have in the uh, spring wheat varieties in the Pacific Northwest. Um, other general production issues this year besides Hessian fly uh, being broadly found are, uh, this is gonna be another very strong stripe rust year. Um, I've already had many phone calls from growers and talked to various uh, experts. Um, you know, spring wheat with the weather we've had is really setting up to, to be infected by stripe rust. Um, we've, we've got pressure coming from winter wheat already. Um, most of the varieties in the variety testing program and release varieties have uh, average or better resistance, but they're not necessarily immune. And so with many of the varieties, uh, growers uh, should have already um, considered or applied a fungicide at, at herbicide timing. Um, but I'm 
you know, we really need to watch spring wheat over the next month because um, it, it's a very high probability that we're going to get strong stripe rust pressure in spring wheat, um, particularly as we move into the higher rainfall regions. And uh, it will be severely yield limiting if that line's not highly resistant. So I strongly encourage you to go to the uh, WSU uh, Small Grains Extension website and look at the variety selection tool and look at stripe rust ratings for the varieties you're growing. And uh, if a line doesn't have a rating of, of two or below, um, you should probably, you know, in addition to scouting your field, strongly consider um, planning on a, on a fungicide application to those varieties.